Happy New Year everyone, Mark here and welcome back to my channel. In front of us we have the new 2022 LEGO Ideas Sonic the Hedgehog building set. It's number 21331, it comes with 1,125 pieces and it's for ages 18 and older. However, there are quite a few things that are worth mentioning before you purchase the set that may make up your mind. Hopefully by clicking on this link you prepared yourself for the opinion of another and can be respectful of those opinions since I do want to be honest when I make my videos. The whole set comes with 27 stickers, which is a lot for a set. Some of them are the pattern for the loop, and others are for the boxes that Sonic jumps on, the faces for the bug robot, and the bottom of the base. For me particularly, and this is an unpopular opinion, I didn't mind the amount of stickers that were in this set because it's, it's a tedious set. I'll explain more on why later, but hopefully you'll understand and maybe agree. Let's start with the Sonic minifigure as he is the star of the set. There's some noticeable differences about the 2022 version of Sonic compared to the LEGO Dimensions version. This minifigure has him with black eyes, the expected spiky head, a printed cream circle on his torso, and a newly printed set of red shoes with the yellow buckles. The previous Sonic minifigure didn't have the printed buckles on his shoes, and his torso print had more of an oval shape. The last difference is that Sonic had green eyes previously instead of the all black. Overall, I'm pleased with the look of this Sonic minifigure as I think he looks very sleek, although I do wish they at least left him with the green eyes instead of the all black. Now Sonic does come with a black base to stand on, and it's quite special since you add 7 colorful gems that he'll collect throughout the level or the game, and it looks amazing. I have to say, this is probably the most simplistic, yet my favorite part of the set. Sonic's foot connects to a clear piece that protrudes from the base, and it allows you to position him in the middle of the base, jumping over the gems, creating a neat stance for him to be displayed. You also get to add the extra yellow ring that he collects throughout the game for more flair. I love it. Moving on to the bug robot, this is another cool build where he's made up of some yellow horns, gray hooks for his arms, bulky red body, and the use of the megaphone bricks as his jets. He has two circular faces that you can swap out that are made up of stickers, which one of them being an angry look on his face, and the other being more of a content look overall. I really think the prints would have been nice for the faces. Luckily, I did a great job at placing the stickers dead center of the circle. Next we have the crab, which is a cute little guy who has two eyes made up of printed circular flat studs. He also has two red claws that move up and down but do not open or close. At the bottom, I appreciate the use of the Lego guns to make up his four legs, and the use of the clear circular piece to help keep him more stable since he doesn't connect to any of the studs on the set. Looking at Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, it looks satisfying. I appreciate the effort in LEGO rounding it up as best as they can, adding the light on the front of the uh, Mean Bean Machine and the jet flame in the back. The stickers on the machine are also a nice touch, two of them being arrows in the back and two of them being vents in the front. On the inside, you'll see a sticker that makes up the gauges for the machine, as well as a stud for Dr. Robotnik to connect to. The machine sits nicely on clear 2x2 circular bricks, stacked up on top of a black base, and when you insert Eggman into the Mean Bean machine, he actually stays standing and it connects to his lower, lower torso between his legs. He actually stays nice and secure in it too. Overall. I'm pleased with the combination of Eggman and the Mean Bean Machine together. Last, we have Dr. Robotnik, which is also Eggman, who I'm not 100% with, you know, overall for this set, and I'll explain why. The overall build for Eggman is neat, and it's decently fun to put together, but it's when it gets to the head where it looks wonky. The printed goggles on the head is a nice touch, but the nose looks completely ugly, and it's really awkward. When I look at it, I can't help but think it looks more like a, a weird tongue sticking out of his mouth rather than a nose. If you look in the booklet, you'll see the original build for Dr. Uh, Robotnik, and I personally think the nose piece looks a lot better than what LEGO decided to do. I also can't help but feel like the mustache looks more like hair sticking out of the side of his head rather than being on the front of his face. Overall, I think it's poorly executed. On a positive note, his arms move up and down, and he has these big fists that really stand out. The legs are long and skinny as they should be, so overall, he looks great besides the head. Getting into the set, we can see the full layout here as it does look gorgeous. It sets up a lot like the LEGO architecture sets where it's slim but long. You have different visuals that protrude out of the ground, vibrant colors, and a variety of nostalgia that makes the set the most memorable Sonic level, being the Green Hill Zone. Let's begin with the plate with the 3x Sonic Live sticker on it. It's a simplistic yet awesome feature they added to the base of the set, giving you that video game vibe while looking at an actual LEGO set. It's definitely a nice touch to start this whole set off. Now the palm trees to the left of the set, which I do personally find very appealing, has lime green shield plates that make the leaves 
and brown skinny yet solid circular tube bricks to make the trunk. Underneath the branches is a thick detailed cylinder brick to give it more of that brown bushy look underneath the leaves. Overall, the tree sits well in the base and it doesn't sway which is really nice. Moving ahead, we have the water underneath the bridge which is striking to the eye. I found it to make the set look even more colorful, side by side with the brown and green colors, and the waves are made up of one by one diagonal cut bricks and it looks totally appropriate. Over the water we have the bridge, in which is uniquely made up of more of those brown cylinder two bricks. You got tan plates and brown one by one studs. The bridge looks fantastic, and I'll actually have the crab resting on top of it as the crab doesn't stick to anything anyways. Looking above, there are three yellow rings connected to clear, tall, and skinny pieces, which also connects behind the set nicely. It definitely adds more of that sonic vibe with the rings, filling in any empty space for the background. As we move further past the bridge, we come across Sonic's checkpoint. It's got the yellow base with the red and blue circular plates on opposing sides. So when he runs past it, that normally should turn. However, it doesn't really turn on the set. You would have to adjust it yourself by taking it off and twisting it around. I would say this is the main focus of the building set as you look across the whole thing, your eye definitely gets drawn to the loop. I've talked with some people about it and I've seen some people say the loop looks too big or even oddly some people said they don't remember a loop in the game, which there is. No disrespect to those who didn't remember, but Sonic is notorious for sprinting through loops and more. Anyways, I believe the loop is an appropriate size for how the set is built. If the set was longer, I'd say the loop would need to be bigger. It looks great, and there's even a base dead center at the bottom of the loop where Sonic can be displayed on before he makes his way around the loop. What I think is a missed opportunity is for LEGO to display Sonic mid-loop. However, I'm sure that can be done through some mocks, but it's possible that Sonic's big head would weigh him down over time. The sides of the loop are stickers, and quite honestly, I didn't mind it. The reason that is, is because the set is practically made up of one by one plates, that it becomes so redundant and honestly annoying, that I didn't mind taking a break from that and got to use stickers instead. I know that may seem lazy and it's part of the build, but quite frankly, that's how it felt. Not to mention, the stickers blend in well with the pattern that some people I showed this to didn't even know they were stickers at first. Above the loop is two boxes that Sonic will typically jump on to get a power up, rings, or an extra life. The front plates are swapped out with others to your preference of display, and you get a total of five plates with five stickers, and it makes for a great customization. Next to the boxes is another platform raised up by clear pillars for the bug robot to stand on. It's nothing particularly special, but overall, it's an addition to spice up the set a bit more. As we get closer to the end, you have a jump pad for Sonic to jump on to reach the three yellow rings, and they're stacked above. The jump pad is a mechanism that seems great, and it's definitely part of Sonic tradition. However, it is poorly executed. Sonic is placed on top of the red jump pad, standing up, and there is a contraption in the back that allows you to quickly press down for the jump pad to launch Sonic in the air to grab all three rings. The problem is that it barely launches him. I've done it numerous of times already, and I can't find myself to make him even go higher than the first ring. Most of the time, he can't even reach the first ring. It's a cool concept with poor execution, and that's totally unfortunate. The rings are stacked above, being held by more clear pillars and one by one bricks. At least it makes for a nice display. Finally, at the end of the level, we see a flower made up of a lime green circle plate and yellow spikes around it. You have lime green leaves underneath the flower, and it makes for a nice visual overall. If we turn the set around, you will see three scores for what would be player scores ranked. I do know it's an easter egg in regards to the names. For example, the first place score is from Viv, who originally created the set. Second place is LCK, which is Lauren Cullen King, the LEGO Senior Graphic Designer. And third place is Sam, being Samuel uh, Lil Torp Johnson, who is the LEGO Design Manager. He also got a score of 1991, which is 1991, the year when Sonic the Hedgehog was first released. Now the real questions are, what did I like about the set? What did I not like about the set? And do I think it's worth it? What I do like about the set is the vibrant color scheme they used to bring the set to life. The loop is an appropriate size, and the Sonic minifigure looks great to me, and so does the crab and the bug robot. I enjoyed putting together Eggman's Mean Bean Machine, and he sits well in it. I appreciate the concept of having a functional jump pad and the extra elements such as the water under the bridge, the boxes with the multiple plates, the rings connected to the clear pillars, and the overall beauty of the set. Everything I saw in the set before buying it screened Sonic. The designers did a great job replicating the Green Hill Zone. What I really did not like about the set though is quite a few things. I'll start with the most bothersome part of it. And honestly, this is just my opinion once again, but this nuisance of using the one by one tiles to create practically the whole set 
it was awful. I know people have said the set looks like it might be a boring build and I should have realized it before buying it, buying it but I, I think I was just so caught up in the vibrant colors and the overall replication of the set. Um, you know, when I dumped the bags to prepare my build and open the booklet, I noticed an abundance of one by one tiles being used and stacked and it happens literally from beginning up until bag five out of six. It's rough, especially trying to line up all one by one tiles to be even with the rest. Honestly, I got baby soft fingers which is surprising consider how much I build and even play guitar, but my fingers were sore and I couldn't wait to be done building the set. This is not a woe is me moment or anything, but I'm just informing you that this is to be expected. That is all. Another thing I didn't like was the jump pads execution. It's a great concept and it looks appropriate. I just wished it worked a little better. There's little room to stick your finger in to hit down the switch to launch Sonic and I think that may be the reason why he isn't jumping high enough. It's not a deal breaker by any means, because I wasn't originally expecting a functional launch pad to begin with, but when you see it, you're like, dang. Before I give you the final reason why, I want to say Eggman is ugly. It's a straight up ugly figure because the nose just tarnishes the overall face. It doesn't look like a nose. It looks like a weird tongue and his mustache looks like it's part of his bald head, giving him hair when, you know, when he shouldn't have any. Finally, the build is actually straight up boring. I didn't find much enjoyment in putting it together compared to you know other Lego sets I've done and I've done a variety, stuff that I haven't even reviewed yet. The build is tedious, it's redundant, it's not exciting at all. As a matter of fact, the set doesn't even look all that appealing until you have it all put together with Sonic, Dr. Robotnik's goons, and Dr. Robotnik, which really add more color variety. I really wish it was a better experience and I know many of you may find this review a bash on the set, but truly it isn't. It's an honest review because if I reviewed every set and said, this one was great, this one was great, I loved all of it, this one is amazing, then there really is no point of reviewing any set. I just want you to be prepared. Do I recommend the Sonic building set? I'll tell you this. It truly is gorgeous once all pieces and parts are put together. That is including the minifigures and whatnot. It looks stunning. If you're a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, yes. You may really enjoy this on your mantle, your desk, or even your shelves. However, if you're looking for a challenge, this set is not it. It's easy. It's boring. It may be challenging for a beginner or someone who is young. All it is is redundancy that takes up a lot of time. Are you looking for a set with functions? This one fails at it. It's one function and it doesn't work properly. This is a set I would buy just to leave alone and never disassemble again. There is no interest for me to want to rebuild it and I'm sorry but I'm just being honest and I want to respect the consumer and not mislead them. Obviously, every builder has a different experience and yours may vary from mine. One final note, I did notice the extra prongs that stick out at the end of the set. I know that this is a LEGO idea set, which means it's not as likely, but there's a possibility more Sonic sets might be to come. That or it's just to rearrange that level to your own liking. Would I consider purchasing another Sonic set if they were to release? It's kind of one of those dumb things I battle with in my head where I go, but it will go well with what I already have. I might. I would have to consider the build next time before buying it like I did with this. Just because it, it looks pretty doesn't mean it's going to be fun. With that said, I really hope this review was helpful to you. It's not to tarnish LEGO, and believe me, I love LEGO, and I respect their efforts, and you know, despite the experience, I understand it's hard work and it takes a lot of time to create something special. Hats off to them and the original creator for their amazing effort and their work. Take care everyone, and I hope to have you around for the next video.